Right, welcome yep. everybody. Welcome to episode three of the Boxing Weekly. I've got Ingram Jones back. He enjoyed it so much last time. He's back on again. How are you, Ingram? Thank you, Adam. Yeah, enjoyed it. It was great stuff. And uh, let's go again. Let's Brilliant, go round two. Well, we got a lot to talk about. A lot to talk about. First of all, let's talk about someone you love to talk about. Carl the Cobra Frotch retiring. Ah, oh, the Cobra, the legend, the... Uh... It's good to it's, it's it's good to find out finally that Mr. Yeah. Frotch has decided to retire. It was interesting because uh, some people alluded to the fact of the interview I did with Abel Sanchez. As you know, Frotch mm. and Dan Rayfield, the American correspondent, had a, went went toe to toe with one another on Twitter. Yeah, Frotch saying he was too big and too strong. I thought, oh, photograph of Frotch. You're saying he's too big and too strong, looking in good shape. I said, ah, oh. either Frotch fancies a fight with GGG and it's going to happen, or it's another one of these Frotch pulling the knickers of all the uh, the boxing fans. So yeah. what do we get? I thought I'd jump straight to Abel Sanchez and get right down to business. So I said, Abel, look, Frotch is on Twitter now. He's saying he's too big and too strong for Gennady. What do you think? Can we make the fight happen almost? And he's like, well, if Frotch wants it, we're here. We... We wanted to fight at Wembley. He didn't want it. So if he wants it, we're here. Gennady can be ready in eight weeks to fight Frotch at Wembley. And what do we get? Less than three days later on, Frotch announces a retirement. So, you know, um, I don't know why Frotch was even going on saying about he'd fight Gennady Golovkin because there's even another interview where he does. I think I think before he fought Groves or after he fought Groves, he said uh, he would swerve Gennady like he'd, he'd, he'd swerve Gennady. Cause yeah, he, HBO he, put it all up in... Um put the quote up actually when Golovkin fought, I can't remember who he fought, um, but yeah, they put it up on, on the big screen, uh, yeah. like right above the, the ring and used the quote, he punches like a mule or something. So yeah, you know, yeah. HBO had their eye on that fight a long time ago. But um, yeah, but yeah, like how serious do you, do you take, because I've watched, um, I've watched a few things since Frotch's retirement's been announced and some people are saying it's not that serious at all. They think a lot of people out there think he could come back depending how how Chavez Jr. looks who's fighting well, this think, weekend. Well, for me, Carl Frotch, you either love him or you hate him. It's as simple as that mm. with him and he speaks his mind and the thing is he's on Sky Sports. He was on Sky Sports before. Mm. So I don't know why people are saying, oh, Frotch is now on Sky Sports. So what was he doing beforehand? Was he not yeah. on Sky Sports beforehand? Um, so he, he's on Sky Sports now. So uh, he's officially on Sky Sports now. Like, so my point is, he was always on Sky. So now he's got that official capacity role as a pundit. So what's he going to do now? Sit down and continue telling us about his legacy and how he knocked out George Groves and how he did everything better than everyone else in his career. So we're going to get that from Frotch. <laughs> what, what, I, what is going to be fascinating for me is how long he can sit on the chair in Sky without somebody calling him out, whether it be George Groves becoming world champion. Should Groves beat Badu Jack? Would Groves call him out for a third yeah. fight? Um, would Frotch fancy that? Is his pride? Because once you retire, you're no longer in the limelight. Mm. And I don't care what he says about going to Sky and sitting down in Sky Studios. Nobody's going to be calling him up. To, you know, He's not going to stand in the ring and 80,000 people cheering his name. That is a, a high that a lot of boxers well, can't come down from. And so that's why you see a lot of fighters going on past the sell-by date because they've still got that ego. They've, that ego that got them to the top is that yeah. ego that brings them back down afterwards because they, 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 they're in the limelight. Everyone's talking about them. They're the champion. So it'll be interesting if Carl Froch can stay on his seat and stay retired like Joel Kalzaki or he fancies you know, getting called out because JC... Joe Kazaki, as we know, has been called out numerous occasions by Carl Froch. I wonder how Carl Froch is going to like it being called out by another young up-and-coming fighter. It'll be interesting to see how he responds to that. It's quite funny how uh, there's a lot of similarities between what decisions they've both made in their career. In my opinion, Kazaki fought probably better. He's undefeated as well. But it's quite interesting how, you know, Kazaki didn't want to fight Froch and wanted to go for the big fight. And then to sort of end on, and then Frotch has sort of done exactly the same thing. Do you know what I mean? Well, it's interesting. People say Frotch is a warrior, which he is, mm. but it was a couple of fights he never took. He never fought Adonis Stevenson. He yeah, never fought. Funny, yeah, a lot of people don't talk about was, that. Was, was, a, was a super middleweight. Frotch never moved up to light heavyweight. So at least Kalzaki did that at the end of his career. Yeah. Frotch never did that, and Frotch was never considered. 
the number one fighter in the world. He was always number two. You know, even when Froch was, you know, uh, the super middleweight around when Andre Woodridge yeah. was, was you know, in that suspension moment, that time where he was had that con- contractual issues with um, the Goosen. It's Goosen, wasn't it? Yeah, Goosen, yeah. Yeah, so when he had that problem with Goosen and your mate um, Dwyer. Dwyer um, oh, wow. Shout out to Dwyer. Uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah I, 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 while all that was going on, um, Frosch still wasn't number one in the world. No. Because everyone no. knew that they were just waiting for Andre Ward to come back and do the business. So there were some people out there who thought, oh, well, if Frosch fought Ward in Nottingham, he'd knock him out in a couple of rounds. But let's be honest, there was no way Frosch was going to go out there and blow uh, Ward away like he did against Boutte. Oh, no. It wasn't going to happen. So, uh, and Frosch himself knew it was a difficult, nasty fight to have against Ward. So, you know, that's one fight that um, with Stevenson I would love to have seen. That would have been a great fight. Yeah, that would have been a good fight. But so where do you think Froch, you know, like people are starting to talk about Hall of Fame and things like that. You know, how, how high do you think he ranks in with, you know, the rest of the great British boxers we've had? How, how high do you think, when we look back in about 10 years' time, where do you think he's going to sit in, amongst those people? Well, he did something Joe Kazaki never did, which was fight back to back, to back, to back, the best fighters in he the really world. Did, yeah. JC never did, did that. You can't say, well, he fought Joe, fought Roy Jones, and he fought Bernard Hopkins. Bernard Hopkins was one, you could say, legit, because after Hopkins was beaten, I would still say controversially by Kalzaki, he still went on and went on to be a very, still good light heavyweight champion and beat some good fighters. And he's still around today. So that's for Hopkins. He didn't fight over the hill Hopkins. As for Roy Jones Jr. now, Roy Jones and Hopkins both dropped Kalzaki in the first round of their fights. You kind of wonder what would have happened had those guys been more so Roy Jones Jr. in his prime. Yeah. Around the time where Roy Jones fought, um, let's say, Clinton Woods, how would Joe Kalzaki have fought against them? He never fought in the Super 6. How would he have done in the Super 6 with those top guys around, a Roy Jones, uh, James Tony, those guys in the Super Six yeah. sticking with Kawasaki in that, would he have still remain undefeated as a fighter? He never fought Glenn Johnson. But then on the flip side, you say Froch. He fought the best fighters that were around. There were question marks about the fight he had against Darrell. You know, the comeback victory he had against Taylor, when Taylor was you know, right on his feet. And, you know, for most of the fight, Taylor was doing very well. And winning the fight against uh, Carl Froch, let's remember, the great fight he had against Sean Pascal. But then you look at what Hopkins did to him and basically schooled him. And one one of the fights, he was doing press-ups in. So, I mean, Froch has had a good career. I'm not knocking it. And, of course, the big fight he ended with George Groves. You could even look into that and say, well, George Groves, who had he been at world-class level? Uh, and Froch never knocked anybody out of world level. So, uh, a, a real world substance uh, yeah. as a super middleweight. So, you could say the Butte fight, but Butte was flawed. Wasn't he knocked out in, in, in a fight in the 12th round with, it, with the, ref, the referee miscounted or something like that? So there's always yeah. some sort of thing around Froch. All you can say, one thing you can't say about Carl Froch is he's a warrior. Will you say whether he ducked somebody? He never fought Stevenson. He never fought Stevenson. So he, can't, he didn't duck anybody. Stevenson was there. He was knocking on that door. Froch didn't open that door. He didn't open that door to the gale. And so as you saw, Stevenson moved on. Can't say Stevenson was ducking him because Stevenson's now gone on and won the WBC title beating Chad Dawson. Yeah. I would love to see him Froch fight a light heavyweight. But for me, a good fighter did better than a lot of people expected. Oh, yeah. Four-time champion of the world? Come on. So you've got to put him down. Now, he, there's no doubt Froch will be a Hall of Famer, I think, in my mind, because he yeah. won all the world titles. The Super 6 he was in came second in the Super 6. So, second best super middleweight in the world, possibly. Um, Darrell may argue with that, but I would say for me, Carl Froch is definitely a Hall of Famer. Uh, he did a lot more with his skill, and his chin will be one of the best ever. Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. you know, his chin, let me say, let's put it this way still. if Froch had, had a dodgy chin, he wouldn't have the career that he had. Oh, no, no, nowhere near. Just think about it. Yeah, I mean, because he wasn't technically great. So, um, so very easy to hit. Yeah. So, um, really? I still think Joe, Jake, Joe Kazaki, skill wise, is a better fighter. Yeah. Um, resume wise, you're going to have to lay to Froch because he fought in that Super Six and he yeah. fought guys 
in the peak of their careers. You know, I mean, Kessler, you could put aside. We had Arthur Abraham, who was still running through, knocking people out of middleweight. You had um, Andre Ward coming through. You had um, you, all those other guys in, in the Super 6. So, really and truly, Durrell. So, I, I'd say Froch has the edge in terms of opposition and caliber fighters he fought. So, I give Froch the edge. Um, I would love to see the fight on the Cobblers. Yeah, that's... Uh, maybe stream that on, on your channel, Ingram. Um, but, <laughs> but yeah, I agree. I think he should, I, you know, for me, you know, you you were joking about my, um, my, my comment on Facebook. But yeah, he really has been, you know, talk about people who, you know, you talk about the Stevenson there. But you look from, you look on his record, like, is you know John Pascal, Jermaine Taylor, Darrell, Kessler, Abraham, Johnson, Ward, Butte, Yusuf Matt, and yeah, but um, Kessler, Gro, you know, double with Gross, but you know, you can't really. You can't, and then look at Joe C's record. You know, he fought Eubank, and then you know he had some interesting fights in between. But you know, big fight against Jeff Lacey, which was the big fight for him that that really broke him out. The Mika Kessler fight was, I still think, his best fight. Mika oh. Kessler unbeaten uh, un a unification bout against a big puncher that a lot of people thought was the best super middleweight in the world. So he became the number one super middleweight in the world. He never fought Roy Jones at when he was in his prime. Mm. So we don't know. But with, you know, so he retired undefeated and shout out to Joe Kazaki for doing that. But I have to give Frotch the nod. Easy. And would, would Kazaki, would Kazaki have gone through the Super 6 and won Super 6? That's the question. Would he have beaten Andre Ward? Yeah, it's an interesting one. Yeah, that, that would have been a sort of fantasy <laughs> matchup. So that would have been, um, that would have been a real 50-50. A real so, did, you know, like, Frotch is getting this Sky deal. Like is it? We never saw anything from that from Kalzagi, really, did we? Is um, do you think that's something he should go into? Is you know, because it'd be nice to have other people involved in the big fights other than just like everyone who's well, recently retired from Sky. Do you know what I mean? Personally, if it was me and it was Sky, I would do a similar thing to what they do with the football with uh, Jamie Carragher and um, what's the other guy's name? Uh, Jamie Very Carragher nice. and Gary Neville. You've got Liverpool. And um, Manchester United. Yeah. So why don't you have Joe Kazaki and Carl Froch on ringside, or those guys yeah, giving yeah. their opinion on a boxing bout? I would love to have Joe listen to what Joe Kazaki has to say and Carl Froch has to say, and just sit back and listen to those two guys talk, show after show after show after show, and see who's the first to mention cobblers and straighteners. It would be interesting. <laughs> I, 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 listen, if I had my way. Tomorrow, I'll do a face-off show with Kazaki and, and Froch. <laughs> I think it would be absolutely memorable. That would be, and then would a be three, crazy. And then a three-rounder, three pay-per-view, three-rounder. Come on. I mean, who would pay for three rounds of Kazaki, Froch, and a bit of that cobbler stuff and a bit of pull and, pull and push, eh? <laughs> bit of that as well. Cobblers, straighteners. Maybe 80,000, Wembley, we can have all of it. Yeah, well, there's been there's been talk of some even stranger fights, so you never know. Uh, one, one, <laughs> finally, finally, one thing relating to Sky Sports, um, ringside, the, the the traditional ringside program has, uh, you know, news has come it's out. Dead. It, it's dead. It's um, dead. What are your thoughts on that? They they say they're going digital and things like that. Hallelujah. Yeah, it's um. Hallelujah. I think it's I think it's time with the YouTube community. We've got so many people out there now yeah. that are giving us such good news. Such good in content. I would say arguably better than Ringside because so many information they're getting Ringside doesn't do give you. Yeah. And I would love to have. I mean, the show's okay, but if you've got the best of YouTube together and got those guys together to do a show once a week, you could get an awesome show mm. with less of the, the politically correct stuff and just getting down to the meet and greet, and the real gritty stuff of, of, of boxing. You know, what makes it tick and, and the really fascinating stuff and talking to people that really matter. No, I'm not saying Ringside didn't do that, but I just think that, and the limited time they had, I think they could go a lot better, a lot deeper without all this sort of trying to make boxers into politicians on the show. Yeah. Let's stick to making boxers being boxers. Let's get back to real down and dirty stuff. I remember watching Nick Owen present um, <laughs> Nigel Benn and Chris Eubank when that signed the contract, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I that would have been the 
the ringside of then um, and the atmosphere there was absolutely unbelievable. And you think that's because people were just allowed to be what they were. Yeah, and yeah, definitely. And ringside still feels very much very staged. We have to sell this. It's going to have to be pay-per-view and it's connected with match room and, you know, just keep things natural. And I yeah. just think... The fighters could, always get a little telling off as well if they swear after the fight. Yeah, well, <laughs> whereas where Benny Eubank didn't have to swear, but you just knew yeah. they just didn't like one another. And you can look up at that now, even 10, 20 years on, and you watch those two and you laugh a little bit and you've still got that fire in your belly. You say, mm. wow, this is going to kick off. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I think the YouTube community could do it. Um, thank you very much, uh, Adam Smith and Johnny Nelson and Glenn McCroy. Thank you very much. Let's let the YouTube community take it from there. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, well, we were talking about the Cobra there. Let's talk about the Gale signing with Al Heyman. Well, you know, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Al Heyman. Yeah. Uh, I've got to say that because I don't think I'll ever get signed by Al Heyman. <laughs> and I don't think uh, I'll ever get the opportunity to actually say it that way on, on a national television. But... While I'm at it, I'll say thanks to Al Heyman. And I'll say two things. First of all, there are a lot of people who seem to know what Al Heyman's plans are, seem to know what Al Heyman's saying, what Al Heyman's doing, but yet no boxing um, outlet has got an interview with Al Heyman. Well, I haven't heard one yet. So um, Al Heyman is a bit of a mystery. Is the guy alive? Does the guy exist? Uh is he, he, he well, was we talking earlier? Is he is he frozen in time? Is he is he part of a secret society? And is he is he a dark overlord? Everybody who signs at Al Heyman says, Yeah, I'd like to thank Al Heyman, but I've never seen him. Yeah. I've never met Al Heyman. From Keith Thurman to, uh, to, to, to Carl Frampton yeah. to yeah. you know, all the guys that sign at Al Heyman, they've never met Al Heyman. But they're all thanking him. So maybe I need to start thanking somebody I've never met before. I don't know, but um the fact that DeGale signed with Al Heyman, what was wrong with Eddie Hearn? Well, he's Eddie Hearn's still going to be promoting DeGale. Yeah. But in terms of, he did an interview with Eddie Hearn, he said, but in terms of, we we go, th basically, Eddie Hearn has to go through Al Heyman uh, to get stuff sorted with James DeGale, which is quite well, interesting. Think, well, okay, here's the situation. If you look at, the way I, I personally think, and it's something that George Foreman and Thurman, I'll keep on banging on about it, about Keith Thurman. Um, you look at the way Keith Thurman's career is managed. At this point in time now, Keith can't really go backwards. You know, he's got to work with what he's got now. And ahead of him are the elite boxers of the division. And as we saw in the Colazzo fight, who Keith himself said was an over-the-hill fighter, he got him with a body shot. He's, I don't think Keith's been exposed because boxing's about at times getting hit, taking that shot and coming back. So he wasn't exposed, but he may have been um, shown for who he really is at this point in time. Um, he was able to suck it up with a wicked body shot and uh, it was a liver shot as well. And anybody who's actually boxed and taken a body shot will tell you the pain of a body shot. It's not particularly nice. Yeah. If you're an armchair fan, you don't know what the pain is like. But aside of that, the way Keith's been managed is... Um, is is he's now is he now he's got the big fight are they going to be able to manage him in a way which is going to be exciting for the fans that's the question mark you look at Deontay Wilder he's under Al Heyman as well oh we know what happens next is he going to get that fight with Povetkin or is he going to get swerved how are they going to manage James DeGale's career now is DeGale going to get the big fights we want to see or is DeGale going to fight just within PBC fighters another fight we've got to talk about is uh Julius Jackson the unbeaten super middleweight yeah. from the Virgin okay. Islands he uh, he made a debut over at Showtime um, a long time ago, and he made his debut. Hasn't fought since. How long ago was that? Well, we're talking five, six, seven months for yeah, a okay. young, unbeaten fighter, not fighting, not active. Why? I mean, you know, there are rumblings that he may be fighting again soon, but we just, I just hope that DeGale is going to be not only matched correctly, but he's going to have his profile raised by being with Al Heyman, you know, because... Yeah. You can see DeGale kind of lost touch with the fan base he had in the UK. Oh, badly uh, um, as well. Very yeah, badly. But, 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 I know, but, but, but to be honest, I kind of defend DeGale because if DeGale didn't open his mouth against uh, against Groves, that fight would not have been the fight that it was. I don't oh, care when it was. Yeah. 
So, so De Gea put himself out there. He put himself out there and he really derated Groves. But that made people tune in to want to watch De Gea lose. Okay? But Eubank did those things. Ben has done those things. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. So he was showing a bit of character. He was like, I don't like you and I just don't like you. You know, um, and he got berated for that. And, you know, a lot of people kind of swerved to Gale and said, you know what, we don't know to Gale. But to Gale is a very talented, super middleweight fighter. Now he's kind of building himself back with Amber and Mendy and trying to get his person, yeah. get something be more with the fans. We just hope now, because Al Heyman, has he seen this? Does he understand the DeGale fan base? Does he understand that DeGale's trying to build an affinity with the fans? Hmm. The last thing you want now is DeGale either not to be fighting often, which the, 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 knocks him out of the limelight, or two, he's fighting the wrong type of fights. Fights that are you know, boring to our rounders, fights that are not he's not explosive in, or fights that people don't want to see him in. You know, I mean, people might want to see DeGale fight Mikkel Kessler, but are we going to see, would we see that fight? Does anyone want to see that fight? Um, does anyone want to see him fight Durrell again? I mean, if, if he was to fight Durrell again, how many people want to tune and see him fight Durrell again? To be I honest, mean, that's what I think will happen. I, I, I can see him fighting Durrell again. He's already said he really wants the rematch. They're both with Heyman. So, yeah. so, so hey, there you go. So with the Al Heyman thing, are we limited with options of who, who, who DeGale can fight, who DeGale can't fight? We're going to find that out. So, is it a good thing? Will he be thanking Al Heyman at the end of the day um, if he has to go back to America and defend the title against Darrell? How many people want to see that fight again? I don't know. I mean, sure, people might want to see him defend the title against maybe Martin Murray or, you know, it's just come to the middleweight. Or people might want to see the Groves 2 fight. Hmm. People will want to see him fight Groves again. Okay, if he beats Badu Jack, Groves has got the championship. Will the fact that DeGale now is with Al Heyman does it make it a fight that's going to happen sooner or later? Yeah. Does it put them close together or pull them apart? Frampton signs with Al Heyman. Does that quick fight, should King Quig not get beat by uh, Martinez on Saturday night? If he comes to successfully, does that does Frampton signing with um, Al Heyman bring those fights as close together or pull them further apart? We well, don't yeah. know. You've got, well, you've got, uh, apparently, you don't know, but, you know, Eddie Hearn claims to get on quite well with them. Um... And then, obviously, you know, Heyman's obviously looking to the UK to expand his stable because he's got the issue where he can't he can't work with top-ranked Golden Boy or main events, from what Kathy Duba was telling me. I don't think she wants to work with him again. So they're going to have to look to the UK, and he's, he's wasted no time in, you know, putting his fingers in that in that puddle. The, the Groves, the Gale thing is a potential for an 80,000 seat at Wembley. Do you think, you know, Al Heyman probably, you know, could have looked at what happened with Frotch and Groves and think, yeah, I want a piece of this. He might think that, but I want to ask the deeper question, why? If Golden Boy were to have done what Al Heyman did, if Top Rank were to have done what Al Heyman did, if, if Duva were to have done what Heyman did, would there have been the same issue? That's what I want to know. Hmm. Probably not as, you know, they've all been, you know, to be fair, they've probably all tried to do it to a certain degree, haven't they? But they're, just, the they're not as good as Al Heyman by the, and you the know. Fact, Al, exactly. And, you, and Al Heyman has not just come up from boxing. Al Heyman's got, for those who don't know, Al Heyman was in the, the Motown industry, yeah. I believe. He also had a hand in, I think, either Whitney Houston and Michael Jackson. So if anybody who knows who what Motown is, it's not boxing. Yeah. And uh, it was uh, yeah, a lot of money made in Motown. A lot of uh, urban or black singers were through Motown. And uh, some of the greatest singers of our time were a part of Motown. So Al Heyman was a part of that. Yeah. And now he's into boxing. And, uh, you know, the fear for uh, Duva and De La Hoya and uh, Top Rank is that basically Al Heyman could overtake them and have a monopoly which is what they don't want. But having said that, it'd be okay if they could do it. Yeah. If if Duva could do it, if Del Roy could do it, or if, if, if Top Rank could do it, I'm sure there wouldn't be a problem. But the fact that Al Heyman's doing it, for me, good for Al Heyman. I, you know, because they would do it as well, and they'd probably do the same things that Al Heyman's doing. Hmm. It, but you ask yourself the question, why couldn't they do it? Hmm, They've been around a lot longer, I guess. Why well, comes they couldn't do it? Why question. is it now Al Heyman's just come out with PBC... Why is it? Yeah, it's a question that's yeah not Another asked enough. Question. Yeah, you, you you're absolutely right. But like are, one thing right. I did want to touch on is 
you know, we, we were talking about this off, off record and about, I was saying, you know, me personally, I'm not convinced by the PBC thing so far. I think, yeah, it's yeah. great. Don't get me wrong. I think it's great. Fights are on TV, free TV. I think it's great for the sport. But, you know, a lot of the fights haven't been that good. You know, okay. Thurman Colazzo, okay. that looked a bit dubious to me. Okay, okay. Let, let, let me put it this way, Jim. Yeah. Let me, let me put this, let's look at it this way, all right? It's free TV. So, first of all, we're getting more exposure in boxing. Yeah. Let's forget PBC was there at the moment. How many fights would we still be waiting to see? Yeah, that's, that's a good the point. Thing. Second thing, we talk about the catch weights. Now you know where I stand on catch yeah, weights. Yeah. I can't. If it if it's a fantasy matchup, let's do it. Yeah. If it's a title, you're fighting your weight division. I don't want to hear anything else. You're fighting your weight divisions, right? Um, so Cotto, as you can tell, I'm not a fan of. Love what he done at middleweight, um, welterweight. Love what he done at not so much at light middleweight. And I can't stand him at middleweight. So of course, yeah. because of the catch weight thing. All right, and that's just respect to the middleweight champions of past of old. Um, so the catchway thing's a problem. But let me see the alternatives. Give me Sky Sports. Uh, a lot of Eddie Hearn's 90-10 matchups. You know, um, I think the yeah, Cleverly look, Bell you card was probably. Well, the best all right, and, and then that, give yeah. me and then tell me that's pay per view. Well, okay, if that's pay per view, then why is Colazzo uh, and Thurman not pay per view? I, you see, so you're getting that for free. So really, if you're going to look at that for European, from a European perspective. Show me something in Europe that's got a better card. Go ahead. Yeah. And free TV. Yeah, that's good. The, the The only thing I worry about is, you know, obviously it's it's better that they're fighting than not fighting. But if so many people are seeing pretty weird fights, like the the Wilder, do you know what I mean? Yeah, you were saying. I get that. I get that. But the thing I get, the thing is, I how long's PBC been somewhere? Haven't you? Okay. Well, how long's PBC been around? Yeah, ten minutes. So. Okay, let, let's let's talk about Box Nation. Let, let, let's let's bring it close to home. Yeah, Box yeah, yeah, Na- yeah, good. Do you remember when Box Nation first came out? Ah, oh, they oh, won't yes. last. Yeah, it's gonna be crap. It's awful. Look at the crap fights we got on Box Nation. Now, how many people tune into Box Nation? Yeah, to be fair, that's a good point. That's a good. Point. Or eat, oh wait, wait, let's go. How many people tune into Box Nation that don't pay for subscription? Let's look at it that way. Let's yeah, let's yeah, get yeah, real. Yeah, loads of people right? stream, don't right? right? Let's keep it real because yeah. that's what we do, right? So those people who are streaming and watching Box Nation, not paying for the subscription, but still getting the good fights. Yeah. But those are the same people that turn around and write articles about, well, oh, Box Nation is going to be destroyed in a year, and Frank Warren's bankrupt, and da 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 and dee 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 da So, you know, boxing, I have to say, boxing fans in general are damn ungrateful because we've got so many fights out now. Yeah. And we talk about, we're well, the sport could possibly be dying. We're getting more opportunity, more than ever, to see fighters. I mean, now you've got the opportunity of more British fighters going to America and fighting on platforms. Okay, my issues with PBC as well. What's up with all the entrances? Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Shocking entrances. I mean, boxers are coming into rings like uh, uh, politicians. Oh, the Queen and the King, they were waving to the crowd. (laughs) Hi, look at me. You know, next thing I want to see is them, like the boxers trying to do autographs on the way to the ring. It's it's all very, uh, it, not, it doesn't feel like a boxing event. It just feels like... Well, this is what I thought Al Heyman would be trying to create. If you look at the example where he's got Thurman fighting in his hometown, he's got uh, Wilder fighting on his hometown. I was like, okay, they're not fighting great fighters, but I like the idea, you know, taking a leaf out of UK promoters' books, yeah. build the fighter in their own city. Build Absolutely. a loyal fan base, no matter what they do, whether they win, lose, or draw, they've got yep. some people behind them. But Amen. It That's looked like good. a lot of tickets were sold, you know, a lot to, you know, give yeah, them away for free. Yeah, but the, the people are getting, it's free, it's free, it's free. Yeah. Uh, and I think some of the people in America say, oh, it's free TV. Well, if it's free, people are actually free tickets to go and watch these big fights. I mean, hey, but I have to say, probably say the British fans are probably the best fans in the world when it comes to watching boxing, you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, if you could give British, if, they, if there wasn't a divide between Britain and America and you could get to see Thurman Collazzo and you could watch it for free in Manchester, damn, would pack that place out, yeah, you know. Yeah, would, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, America's a big place. Yeah, America's it's early big, days, so uh, I suppose. Yeah. I suppose any time, time will tell. But let's uh, look. Let's look at them. Um, let's look at PBC in two, three years' time from now. As we have with Box Nation, how long's Box Nation been around now? Three and a half years, I think, something like that. Yeah. But look how far they've come, and now they're showing oh, the yeah. fight. Oh yeah, they've done. They've done really well recently. We've we've spoken about it quite a lot. You know. Yeah. So you you know um, some things could be improved. You know that, but you know. 
You can't knock. You, you cannot knock what the the fights are on. I'm not sure sure about the coverage, meaning the in betweens. With you know, it's you know, I think it could be livened up a bit more, but hmm. presentation wise, but the fights themselves, you can't knock that. Okay. Okay. Brilliant. Well, uh, moving on. Let's move on to this weekend's action. We've got uh, we've got some good fights going on. I. Anyone listening, all you subscribers, I'm actually going up. I've got media accreditation for the first time. I think I've Woo! come off the bench because they only tell me on Wednesday, but I'm still going. Um, first of all, where should we start? Crawler against Perez. I've barely seen anything of Perez. I've seen a little bit. And um, to be honest, he looks like Crawler. I suppose the thing most people are wondering, he got hit over the head by with a brick and snapped his ankle i think he snapped the the fibia rather than the tibia which is the big one i i I think i'm right so you know i'm a little bit i'm a little bit concerned about crawler to be honest like it wasn't that long ago that's that's something quite bad to happen to you being being attacked like that you know you still i mean it still delivered the world title fight so win lose draw crawler would have would be fighting for a world title question mark of course is what does Crow look like? Why didn't he get a warm-up fight before he got this world title fight? I mean, mm. it would be nice seeing what he looks like coming back. So um, that's the first thing. Secondly, uh, I know Sky like to say that Crawler's world class. I would really seriously look closer into that. Crawler's a good fighter. Um, I, don't I, don't agree know. With that. I haven't. I, I haven't personally seen anything world class from Crawler yet. You know, that's I'm not saying he can't produce that, but I haven't seen that yet. That's my point. Yeah. And they seen by guys that are not world class. So uh, I, I just think that we'll just wait and see with Crawler. I, you know, uh, it'd be it, this is not a this is not a ninety ten fight. It's not a Joe Gallagher ninety ten fight. No. So I want to hear what Joe Gallagher. I want to hear this weekend what Joe Gallagher is going to say in the corner because this guy gets a lot of accolades for ninety ten fights. Ninety ten meaning that ninety percent of the time your fighters are going to win the fight. 10% chance that the other guy is going to win the fight. So, mm. um, so Crawler, we're going to see what he's like in this fight. Um, but again, I'd like to see him how to warm up fight. So I don't know what to say about a fight. It's an unknown because nobody's, yeah, apart from those people who have been in the gym, watch Crawler spar. I don't know what to say. I can't make a comment on Rock Crawler, but he's not world class. And if this guy's world class that he's fighting, then um, the writing's on the wall, to be honest. Yep. But if Crawler pulls it out, wow. Happy to have another world champion. Yeah, we're going to have to see. We're definitely going to have to see the best we've ever seen from uh, Anthony Crawler, and um, he's up against it, uh, especially you know from on paper anyway. Especially with yeah. what's happened. So moving on from that, we've got um, fellow stablemate of his, Scott Quigg. Like we spoke about this on the first episode of the show. You you said you were really excited about this. I don't know. Have you been watching the weigh-ins and the face-offs? Oh, I, I, I haven't. I haven't. I don't think. I mean, I haven't. I haven't yet. And. Um, which is strange because I actually like Scott Quick, but um, I like him. But you know what? I actually watched today. To be fair, I watched him fight a guy. He was in the pocket, wasn't moving his head, and he got caught with a left hook, cut, pulling that straight back yeah. and getting knocked down. I think to myself, well, if he gets in the pocket, makes those mistakes against someone like Kiko Martinez, Kiko Martinez will take his head off for him. Crawler, I mean, um, Quick has got to show something more than what he showed so far in his career. Um, he's going to show a very good chin. Um, let's hope that his body punches do transfer up at world level now against a guy, Kiko Martinez, that when he comes to fight, and he's in Europe, you know, he'll come to fight prepared. If there's anything left to Kiko Martinez, Scott Quigg is in a, a very difficult fight. Um, I think Kiko comes into the fight a, a favourite. Yeah. If Quigg really, if Quigg really is talking about fighting Frampton, he's got a dispatch of, of Martinez and in good style to set up uh, and then if he can knock Martinez out quicker than than Frampton did and destroy Martinez wow then he makes a statement and then he says let's get it on Frampton that's what I want to see from Quake but I uh, for me I'm concerned about the big right hand of Martinez landing on Quake's chin I'm concerned about that uh, you're getting dropped by lesser fighters Quick has come on as a fighter. I love his body, his combination punching. But um, is he going to stand in the pocket too long? As you know, Gallagher fighters, they don't move their heads. They seem to stay in the same position all the time. 
So it'll be key what Gallagher says to um, Colin. Um, Colin. I keep saying Colin. <laughs> That's um, all right. Strange. Quig in the corner. I would like to see Quig win the fight. I really would because it would be. It's brilliant for British boxing. Oh, yeah. Oh, Quig yeah. and Frampton can, can get together and get that super fight on, right? So, well, I have to call it a British super fight because, you know, that's what I would think it would be. Um, I would like, I would love that fight to happen, but whether he beats Martinez or not, I don't know. This is for me the first time Quig really steps into world class. I'd agree with that, yeah. Because I saw what he did to that guy, uh, Martinez did to that that champion who won the belt off. Um, he went over there. It was in America. And he just took it to a guy. And I think that guy was unbeaten at the time. He was a power punch himself. So he's not got no worries about going over to a man's backyard. Oh, no, so he goes anywhere, doesn't he? Yeah. yeah and he basically had toe-to-toe and had it with him and steamrolled him. And, it, and if he goes with that same attitude with, 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 with Scott Quick, I mean, nobody knows. Because Scott Quick's never fought at that level of world no. class. We don't know how good Quig is. He's unbeaten, so we don't know how much he can take. We don't know how much he can go. I hope he can do it, but Martinez might be a bit too much for him. Okay. But I think if he's going to do it, he'll do it late. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm kind of siding. I'm, 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 it's a hard one to pick, but I am kind of leaning towards Scott Quig. I'm just thinking... Quig, at the age he is, he's kind of just about to maybe come into his prime. I think he might be meeting Martinez at the right time. I think Martinez might just be about on the decline. Not completely. I don't think he's completely at the bottom yet. But I think he's just, you know, he's just gone past the the, the peak of his career a couple of fights ago. Do you know what I mean? I think. So, what was his last fight he had? It was. It was. Uh, it was. It wasn't anything great. Um, I'll find out for you right now. Hold on. He's had one fight since the uh, since the Frampton fight. Yep. Uh, George Gakalidze, uh, sixteen, fifteen, and one uh, in Barcelona. Um, TKO second eight rounder. So just a keep busy fight. Um, that we did that. Was that a was that a quick fall? Yeah, yeah. Good point. I know. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Um, so, yeah, they, they are the same sort of things I'm worried about. We haven't seen quick sort of Martinez is the unanswered question we need from Scott Quigg, if you know what I mean. That's... Okay, Ma- okay. Martinez um, slightly past his best versus Quigg at his best. Yeah. Does Quigg still him? Quigg, Quigg didn't look astonishing in his last fight, did he? He, you know, he did no. what he needed to do. He didn't look... Is he improving as a fighter? Is he proven? Is he improving? That's hard to say. There there was a period where he did start. He did start to look like he was improving a bit. He had he had uh, good performances against people who weren't that good. They had okay records, like Minyai and Jamoy. Did look very impressive. Um, In the Ataki fight, he looked like he'd gone backwards a little bit. But it's quite hard to judge. Fight by but he's got Frampton. He has looked on fire. Every fight you see him, he looks on fire. Yeah, to be fair, his sort of similar, similar sort of. Well, the opponents, yeah, they probably his last opponent was probably a bit better than Quigs, wasn't it? Really. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And yeah. he's fought Martinez as well, so mm. you know. Well, it's good. It's good, folks. Quigs finally against the name, and we'll find out how good he really is because you know this is. This is it for Quig, isn't it? This is this is a real crossroads fight for him, I'd, I'd say. Here's another thing to throw at you. The fact that he's WBA something oh. paper, something champion, yeah? yeah? That, that for me, has been a more of a stumbling block for Quig, I think, than a, a, it's more of a stumbling block in terms of uh, negotiations for Quig rather than a, 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 a positive pushing him forward. Because it hasn't boosted his, it hasn't boosted his standing in the world ratings in terms of well, everyone knows who Scott Quigg is now because he's a WBA champion. That hasn't helped him. In yeah. terms of being a negotiating table, that hasn't helped him because you've got McGuigan saying, "Well, we've got a legit IBF title here." Then you've got a situation where Scott Quigg hasn't got the, the great. He's not Mr. Personality, is he? So I mean, and then add all those things in together into the mix, and then has he fought better being a champion? than he was as a challenger. Some guys get better when they're champion. Other guys struggle with being a champion. And I don't know if Scott Quigg has become a better fighter being a champion, or he's just the same with 
as a belt holder. There's a difference between a champion and a belt holder. Oh, big difference. I know exactly what you mean. And, yeah. and this is the question we're going to be asking ourselves on Saturday night. Are we looking at Scott Quick, a champion, or Scott Quick, a belt holder? Mm, interesting. Good way to if he's a belt holder, then he won't be holding that belt after Saturday night. Mm. Mm, yeah. Yeah, if he's, if he's not up to it, yeah, Martinez is definitely going to find out. So. <laughs> Yeah. It's a big, it's a big fight. It's uh, glad to see Matrim putting him in there with someone like that. Well, um, talking of, uh, we'll, we'll talk of uh, Mr. Uh, Rigando and Lamachenko's. Looks like it's, it's pretty much done. Uh, it's quite a, again. There's rehydration clauses and things like that in it. Um, Rigando's completely stepping up. You, you're talking about Froch. Uh, something that hinders his legacy is that he didn't step up to light heavyweight. Rigando, we've really got someone here who's, you know, he struggles to get these fights and he's just, he's stepping straight up against 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 one of the see, best. For me, see, for me, for me, there, there, there are problems here because it's not like, you see, you could say that weight's not an issue because he, cause Rigando could step up and because of his good footwork and his boxing ability and his skill set, it's so high. Against most fighters he moves up against, he can still make look great. Hmm. But now he's got another guy in Lomachenko yeah. who's got awesome skill himself and he's becoming better as a fighter. So you've now got a situation where I personally, again, people are excited about this fight. I would rather have seen Nicholas Walters fight Lomachenko. That's the fight I would have seen. Yeah. I'd faster watch that fight than uh, uh, Stars fights, don't they? yeah. And I would rather have seen that fight. I mean, I see, you know... I, What's going on with Walters? He came in a bit chubby, didn't he, in his last fight? Yeah, he did. He said, he, said he, tried to, tried to, he tried to lose the weight and he couldn't get down and all the stuff like that. But I, I would love to see Walters fight Lomachenko. But um, for me, if, if Rigandau wanted to fight that fight against Lomachenko, what I would like to see is Rigandau move up, fight somebody in that weight division, and then fight Lomachenko. Because at least he's got an idea of what he feels like at that weight. Yeah. You know, um, skill-wise, great. Footwork, awesome. You know, but it's not just another champion he's fighting. No. He's fighting another highly skilled champion, you know, and probably what a freak of nature in terms of what he does as an amateur. So it's a great fight. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind but, of surprised it's happening, to be honest. Because... I think, it's, but then, I think in, a, in a situation where... Um, Rigandau has got nobody wants to fight the geezer. Nobody wants to no, fight him. Yeah, he's who thing. needs him, club? I mean, he's not. It'd be interesting if Rigandau was English speaking, because if he's English speaking, you know, he'd probably have more connection with fan a uh, fan mm. base, and uh, it'd be interesting to see what sort of a personality he is. Was is is Rigandau a guy that talks a lot? Is he a guy that's very verbal? I mean, you know, there was one article that was. I don't know where it was. I don't know who, where the article was from. It said that Rigandau is coming to England to knock on the door, Scott Quigg. I'm, I was going to wonder, well, how's that conversation going to work? Is he going to knock on Quigg's door with a translator right next to him? Like, yeah, I want to fight you. I mean, how would that conversation yeah, kind of work yeah. out, you know? So, well, there was talk of Rigandau, where Frank Warren was talking last year that they could be working with very closely with Rigandau, getting him fighting on Box Nation in this country. But they obviously... Rig didn't think it was worthwhile because it didn't happen um, great, or something else great happened. Fight. Yeah. A great fight. And I think that he's got he's got all the skills in the world. He's got the whole philosophy hit and not get hit. I mean, you also saw him against that guy that, he, that, that I think it was a Japanese guy for yeah. that looked much bigger than him. Well, that, that, that brings up a good point for the next fight, doesn't it? So, but he was able to drop him. Yeah, so that's interesting. And, and he drinking out, got off the canvas and, you know, it's like, oh, he... Rigandau's got chin issues. I don't know about that. The guy was pretty big that dropped yeah, him. Yeah. You know, and I'd like to see, I'd like to see that guy fight um, a Quig or Frampton, how they would do against him, you know? Yeah, that'd be interesting. That, that, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, that definitely. guy looked dangerous. So, um, it's a great fight. It's a great fight for boxing fans. Um, I still would like to see Walters versus Lomachenko. Uh -huh. who, who, who do you think is going to win? Who are you siding with? First thoughts. If I gave you a fiver now and you had to go and put a bet on. Who, who would you put it on? Lomachenko. Yeah, you got Lomachenko. I, 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 I hate Lomachenko because I think um, he's, first of all, Rigandau's moving up. Um, 
You see, but you had the situation. Look, look at the fight with Shea Mosley and, 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 and uh, Oscar De Loya. Shea Mosley jumped up. I mean, one or two weight divisions for Oscar and out of box Oscar. But you, it's not like that because you've got two guys are highly skilled. But he's a. They said a good big and always beats a good little one. Yeah. So. <laughs> Tough. But they're both very skilled fighters. Yeah, very interesting. It's a hard one. It's Great hard fight, one. Though. Yeah, it's a hard one for bookies, definitely. Well, finally, mate, moving on to uh, the news today. Um, Anthony Joshua is going to fight Gary Cornish for the Commonwealth Heavyweight title on the 12th of September, I think it is, at the O2. Uh, yeah, this has been taught. This has kind of been not a very well kept secret. Obviously, Joshua's got Dillian White coming up. Yeah. Let's get into that. Yeah, let's, let's talk about it. it. Uh, let's talk about Dillian White first. Now, a lot of boxing fans are like, yeah, Dillian White's going to fight Joshua. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's like the end of Anthony Joshua or the end of Dillian White. And it's like, <laughs> don't you see? Like, first of all, when was the last time Dillian White had a fight? One. Two. Why isn't he even more active? Three. By the time Dillian White fights Anthony Joshua, you know for a start that it's Joshua's going to have the momentum and not Dillian White. So those are the first issues I've got there. I would like to see Dillian White fight three guys that we know their names of. For example, you know, a Matt Skelton like 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 how Dillian uh, like how Joshua fought a Matt Skelton, uh, a Jason Gavin, and a uh, you know those three guys. Let let Dillian fight those three guys. Get the ring rust off. Let him get his confidence box in the ring again fighting. Have three fights and then lead up to a big fight between Joshua and, 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 and Dillian White. Why are they in a rush to get Dillian White to fight now in, in November or December? I don't I don't see what the rush is for. Probably because Surely, they know right. how much ability Dillian White's got and they'd rather fight him now than a couple of years down the line right. when he's got a better chance of beating Joshua. That's probably why. Right. Well, 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 that is it. So... I'm not pleased the fight's been made because I can see. Okay, cool. I, I, I'm not happy the fight's been made because, for me, I would like to see Dylan White fight some guy. Like, let's see him fight John McDermott. Let's see Dylan White fight John McDermott, you know? Because I believe McDermott was going to fight uh, J- Gary Cornish. That was the fight that was arranged. And yeah. I think that got cancelled. Yeah, well, I was, was just thinking that would have been probably better for the yeah. heavyweight division in the country. White yeah. fight Cornish, yeah. And then, Be- because because we would have got a bit more idea of where Dillian White is. People, when people talk about Dillian White, what's the first thing they mention? The amateur fight. So, well, what was that to you about Dillian White's career so far? Mm. That you have to go back and talk to a guy's amateur career. You're not talking about, oh yeah, the last fight Dillian White had was against that guy. Nobody says that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When Good you point. talk about Anthony Joshua, you talk about yeah, the last fight he fought was um, uh, what was Johnson. his last fight? Love was it? Love he knocked out. Uh, no, Johnson. Oh, he knocked out um, Kevin Johnson, wasn't yeah. he? So he knocked out Kevin Johnson. So everybody knows Joshua fought Kevin Johnson and he knocked out Kevin Johnson. So he's got the showcase, the highlight reel that everyone talks about. When you look at Dillian White, no disrespect to Dillian White. Who was his fight? last fight? It was when Frampton fought... Um, what's the guy's On name? TV, yeah, I can't even remember. Yeah, that was, that was great. But yeah. what's happened since? Mm. Yeah. So I don't, I, I'm not happy this fight's been made now. I think it's a, a clever move by Matchroom. I and, agree and, with that, yes. yeah. <laughs> however, however, wouldn't it be funny that they try to be smart and Gillian White still beat Anthony Joshua? That would be, well, a lot of people, a lot of people are going with Gillian White. I don't, I don't see it personally. Like, I've seen the, the amateur fight. Joshua looks, you know, he obviously isn't fully developed in the, whereas Gillian White looks quite similar to where he is the way he is now. Um, whereas Joshua, you know, he looks, he's, he's kind of rakey in a way. But if you go, if you go back and look at, at, yeah, he's got stronger, yeah. he's got physically stronger. So the blows that he was hitting Dillian White with before, he may hit Dillian with now and Dillian may go, if Dillian gets blown out in a couple of rounds because uh, um, Joshua hits that much harder now, I don't know. Yeah. I don't, I, I, Nobody Joshua knows. Joshua's a very cool customer anyway with the media. But whenever he's you know, the the only times we've seen him get a little bit riled is when Dillian White's name's been mentioned. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, and if you, and if I think Dillian look, White's quite good at winding him. I, I quite Josh, like his sense of humour actually, Dillian White. Yeah, he's of like, course. Oh Eddie left him alone for five minutes, so he he's on his <laughs> way. <laughs> Things like that. If you look, think, if you look back 
I mean, people go back to the amateur day when he got stopped by um, Dillian White. But let's go. Let's even go into the cha- I think the World Championships. He got stopped by. I think it was a Russian guy who got stopped by as well. Mm. Uh, and that was when somebody was hitting Joshua back. It seems when Joshua starts getting hit back in fights, you know, where he's not getting his own way, there seems to be a problem there. Well, in the so, Olympics, he got very lucky in one of the fights, didn't he? You know. Yeah. I mean, so let, let let's be honest. Um, all we want to know is, as a pro, does Joshua take a good shot? And how does he fight when somebody starts hitting him back? You can, you can look great and spectacular knocking people over. And that's the same for Dillian White. We want to see both ways. We want to see both guys. So they say, well, this is a competitive matchup. But you know, I don't think you're getting Dillian White as his best. No, no you, not at all. Not at all. I, if I was I, Dillian I, White's I, advisor, I'd be saying, let's wait. Let's wait till next year. Yeah, absolutely. But I would say to Dillian White, Let's wait, but let's get you fighting against some names in the division. Yeah. Let's get you fighting some names in the division. I don't know why that's not happening. But, yeah, that's my thoughts on it. I don't. As for Gary Cornish, that seems a nice thing. I've got no, 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 nothing against a Gary Cornish. From the reports I've heard from sparring partners is that Cornish hasn't got the greatest of chins or yeah. stamina. Those are, the, those are the two things I've heard. And if you look at his style... You wouldn't say Gary Cornish has got a dynamic style. You wouldn't say Gary Cornish no. is... Um, he, he doesn't look like a guy who's going to come and have it with you. He doesn't look like those other type of guys. Um, he kind of reminds me in some ways of like Tom Dallas, an uh, unbeaten version of Tom Dallas. He hasn't got that that mean machine sort of, I'm coming, I'm coming for you. I'm, hasn't got that just, ring presence, do you know what I mean? There's something he hasn't got that, yeah, yeah. I mean, business. Look, look, you know what? you got bombs, but i got bombs too. You kind of feel like, like a, you know, you take a couple of rounds to sort of feel you out and, and mm. find out where you... And while he's doing all that, Josh is going to rush over rush and bang, 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 bang. And I think the fight will be over in a couple of rounds. I hope I'm really wrong. I hope that Cornish has got a great chin. I hope Cornish has got a fantastic stamina. And I hope Cornish can go like eight rounds, ten rounds and give us a real good fight. And then answer all the questions against uh, Anthony Joshua, and, and you know that we prove one way or the other way he's at. And then we can see with Dylan White, him get some good fights, and then you know get the two together. But I don't like the way it's done. I really don't. And I don't. If boxing fans can see Gary Cornish, I don't think he's you know he's unbeaten and he's tall. He's unbeaten and he's tall. So it's another challenge for Joshua. Another look. Yeah. There was a, a couple of other things. I, I did say finally, just before I asked you that question, but uh, no, no. it brings me on to thinking about a couple of other heavyweights. Obviously, we've got Tyson Fury. Um, you, uh, Let's go. Press we, conference next Tuesday. Yeah, press conference next Tuesday. The, um, what, what are your thoughts? I, 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 I was um, popping in with some some uh, little bits in your show on your on the where you can type in. And yeah. uh, I've spoken before about I don't think... I can imagine it being a pretty mellow build-up, to be honest. I don't think well, either are going to waste time and effort because they're both quite mentally strong, do you know what I mean? Unless they try and try and sell the fight, but I don't think it really needs much selling. It's interesting. I was having a conversation with somebody on, Twitter, on Facebook today. They're inboxing me. And I had this thought, and I thought, the fight it's in Dusseldorf, right? Hmm. So now, if Fury's doing his interview in Dusseldorf, it's not in London. So he hasn't got all the British press in the same. He hasn't got that same thing to play to. So now he's got to do it in Germany. I'm not saying Germany. He wouldn't do it in Germany. He'll, he could kick off in Germany, but it's in Germany. And like, yeah, probably just sit just, there. And... The majority of Germans will just sit there and just go. <laughs> so this is another Englishman. Yeah, he's over here. We yeah. had David Hayes yeah. and Derek same Dora. They're all the same. Yeah, and we had David Hayes say he's going to knock uh, the brothers out and he said that he had the two heads and you know they had the Germans yeah. we had like, Derek before <laughs> spitting in people's face so they're going to they're going to love and us aren't they um, and now we've got this guy he's really tall he's come over here he said he's calling Klitschko a shithouse and this and that you think yourself are the German media and the German press really going to Dick to Tyson the same way if it was in the UK now. I mean, if the press conference is in the UK and it's in London or it's in mm. Manchester and Klitsch goes there and he's not, he's not in Germany and in Klitsch goes to Maine, we'll probably have a bit more fireworks. But the fact that he's away in Germany, 
will he be allowed to open his mouth the same way? Because obviously... It's a good point. It's a really good point, actually. Something because I haven't really can, thought of, to be honest. If he can open his mouth up in Germany, like, look, I, I'm not on British soil. I'm in Germany, tucked away, having an interview with someone. Or I'm, I'm, I'm selling a fight with Klitschko. Come on. I said, well, what to say? I mean, we know eventually Tyson's going to call uh, Klitschko shithouse. It's, it, 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 it's just a matter of time. It, you know, we we're waiting to see that happen. But it's just how the German press and, and how they respond to that behaviour. We know in Manchester we'd get the giggles and the clapping and the, yeah. Hey! Yeah. but the Germans yeah. are not quite like that. And another thing, while I was kind of sitting back thinking, the whole Tyson Fury show, I mean, with Derek Chisora, he was very, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And he did the same thing with Houston off. Yeah. But I just kind of wonder if, Tyson did that to somebody who had a volatile temper, someone who really would kick off. Let's say Tyson Fury were to say to Ty- Mike Tyson, you're a shit house." How would Mike Tyson respond? <laughs> you know, th- this is interesting because so far in Tyson's career, we've seen, you know, him say, you're a shit house," and uh, or you're this and you're that. And like David Hay just sat back and listened to him. Derek Chisora went, but we didn't really get anything from Derek. He was just like somebody who was ready to go, but he just never turned up to the party any time. Yeah. Now you've got Klitschko. Are we going to get Klitschko sitting back and, all right, you're calling me shit house. I'm the king. This is my kingdom. Or are we going to get a Klitschko standing up and saying, oh, you want some? It would be interesting to see Klitschko just turn and like say you want something and be very aggressive in his approach. Yeah, that would be interesting. How would Tyson respond to now Klitschko being aggressive? Or how would he respond if Tyson, if if like Mike Tyson was there? Would would Tyson if you conduct himself in the same manner if a Mike Tyson was there and said, Tyson, he said, hey, you're a shithouse. And then Mike will say, yeah, well, let's have it. I mean, Tyson ran across the Lennox Lewis yeah. and had it with Lennox Lewis. <laughs> so if he could do it with Lennox Lewis, <laughs> you just, just, I just don't think of myself, would you really do it? Would you do it with those guys? I mean, you do it against guys who probably, you know, wouldn't give it back to you. Yeah. But does that stuff roll with guys that would, would uh, could you imagine him saying that to Wilder, to his face? So I say over Twitter and calling someone a shit house and laughing and joking. Cause, but when you actually see them face to face and they're looking you in your face, you say, you, you're a shit house. And you're not Kevin Johnson laughing along and rapping away. And you're saying, oh, I'm a shit house. You want some? And it gets that confrontational. What do we see then? Does that rattle Tyson Fury or does he hold it together? Does he kick off and roll off and run around this guy? Does that change his mentality? I would love to know how Tyson responds to stuff like that. Well, I, I, during the Kevin John, Johnson build-up, I think they were going going for beers together as friends before the fight. <laughs> that looked scripted to me. And the best mates yeah. now. So, um... yeah, I mean, yeah, so, I mean, that's it. <laughs> I love, I love Tyson because he's a character. I love the way he conducts himself in that sense. And we all talk about, um, you know, fans and, 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 and showmanship. I still think Nazim Hammond was the greatest entertainer oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. In, in this country. And there's been no one since. No one since. The entrances, the press conferences, the wisecracking, the interviews, the knockouts. He gave you everything. He gave you knockouts. He gave you interviews. He gave you, he gave you cheek. He gave you trash talking. He'd be on all the uh, American David Letterman's and things like that. One yeah, he, he did everything. In the way in. Yeah, he was, who, who, who comes to America and <laughs> vaults no. over the ropes and gives it to America? Don't. So he used to get knocked down and then get up and do a little dance after. That's so guess, that's what you got with Nas. Yeah, we had Hatton and we had Hatton with you know and and, and uh, you know what he did with Mayweather and Pacquiao. But again, at the highest level, when he fought Mayweather and Pacquiao, got sparked. Yeah, yeah. Um, against with with, with, with Hamid, he fought some of that corner near the top level fighters, and then he got done by uh, Barrera. But then Barrera's are like an all time great, yeah, you know. Yeah. So. You know, Hammer still pulled it off. He still pulled off what he did for his career. So whether Tyson can do that it would be interesting. But it's the lines. It's the lines. Or like a Hassim Rackman when Lewis turned around and said, you know, I, 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 you know, bring me a sister. You think I'm gay? Bring me a sister. I'll show you what gay is. Mm-hmm. Right? When he said that Hassim Rackman, those two guys are rolling around in the studio. Will Tyson, could Tyson handle something like that? That's what I want to know. Because mm-hmm. we hear a lot of talk from him. But when it, I'm not saying he doesn't fight in the ring, but I'm talking outside. 
And that's the sort of stuff I, you know, Klitschko's a guy that watches a lot of things. Would he take a chance as a preview? Would he take a chance with, with Tyson and, and actually stand up and look Tyson in the face mm. and give him some verbal back? Something we don't normally see from Klitschko. Mm. Would we get that? Well, what will be really interesting is when Vitali does his little goes and watches um, them do the gloves. That is going to be very interesting. We don't even have we don't have to wait that far. We've seen Vitali lose it. Yeah, he does lose it a bit. You know, doesn't he? he lost it with David Hay a few times. You know, and um, it will That's be interesting be to see. Yeah, Vitali. See now, Vitali and Tyson Fury. I'd be more interested in that yeah. one. Because you know Vitaly, he, 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 he's a madman. He'll, he'll lose. He'll go. Yeah, he'll that go. guy's a brave guy. Some of the stuff he's been doing in Ukraine. Is, uh, he'll go. Yeah. See, he's not worried about Tyson Fury. He'll go. He'll go some. Mm. You know, uh, Vladimir's a lot more refined. He's a lot more... You know, oh, definitely, yeah. Yeah, more statesman-like. Yeah. I think Vladimir should have been the mayor and, and, and Vitaly should still be around today. Yeah, to be fair, the way they fight is quite similar to their, well, their sort of media profile. Yeah, do you know what I mean? It's... But, um, it's interesting. I would love to see Vladimir. Like I know he's getting a bit more uh, adventurous with his with trying to knock people out and stuff. But I would like to see Vladimir like for this one, just for the fans, that Vladimir actually got off his seat and said, "All right, okay, you want some? What <laughs> are we doing, mate? Let's have it." You know, I would like, you know, would like to read Wednesday morning or like Tuesday afternoon. Tyson Fury and Klitschko scuffle, and Klitschko throws a punch, and Fury throws a punch, and tables fly everywhere, and you know, Tyson Fury's gang jumps in and, and <laughs> in Germany. Oh, I'd love amazing. that. Now, what's for that? That, yes. I want that in Germany. Give me some of that. Come on, let's do this. Derek Chisora and David Hay, the whole thing is played over the world. Millions of people yeah, saw it. And then we hear, oh, it's a black eye for British boxing. The same people you'll see front row watching the fight come mm. fight night. So, I mean, I want to see that. That's what I want to see. But it's more than likely you're going to get Tyson saying what he says, Klitschko sitting there and going, yes, Tyson, let's see what's going to happen. You know, you talk a lot. So I want to see some action. And I, what do you, do you think it can happen? Do you think Klitschko can flip and become a madman, become a bad man? Do you think I can't, do I can't see it. I can see, I can see Vitaly kicking off. I can't see like, you know, Chisora spat in his face. Like, you know, yeah. I'm not a violent person, but someone spat in my face. Do you know what I mean? I don't know many people would let you spit in their face and not do anything about it. Yeah, exactly. I, mean? I know it was just like water, but still, like, you can't show any more disrespect. And, and, and he just went straight in his face and just spat. And he didn't do it. Like, you, they slowed it down so many times. So, yeah, you know, I don't think... You know, unless he goes on about his wife or something like that. But I, I can't see Fury doing that. I don't well, think he'd go down that road. What about, what about giving, what about like, this fantasy putting a bandana around Klitschko's head, you know, and, um, Nathan Cleverly star walking out to a press conference, you know, <laughs> it's a tank top and some jeans. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> oh, no, I've been silly now. <laughs> <laughs> we can all dream. This is exciting. Everybody wants to see the press conference. Yeah. Everybody wants to see that press conference. It's good. There's real, uh, there's real buzz about it. I'm, I'm more excited about this than I'm more excited about this than it was uh, Mayweather Pacquiao. Well, I wasn't really yeah. that excited about it to be honest, but um, yeah. Mayweather, we've got to talk about that and that great fight he's having next against Andre Berto. Yeah, it was well. This this brings me back to because they're talking about this being on PBC, but I do not see that in a million years. I I can't see Mayweather. I don't Mayweather. I Mayweather is not that bothered about what the fans think anymore. I'm sure of it. I'm. You know, I think it's just uh, it's rumours. This PBC thing, him fighting Andre, but B- B- I can't see Mayweather not cashing out on another pay per view. Let, let, let's let, let's make this really interesting. Let's make it really exciting here. Yeah, let's let's talk about the fact because everyone's going to say, "Oh yeah, Mayweather's going to fight Bert. Oh, it's going to be real boring. Bert's going to get, get, get beaten." That's what everyone's going to say on all the YouTube channels. Yeah. Let's make it interesting. Let's. Say Berto's gonna win the fight against Mayweather. Where does that put Andre Berto first and foremost? Exactly. Andre Berto, we get up next morning and you discover Andre Berto has just knocked Floyd Mayweather out in the third round. What happens then? I can't, I can't even go? think that happening. I can't see that. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Let's let's let's, hold on. let's think a second. Where does that legacy go? I think the, I think there's yeah, a lot of there's a lot of obvious things that people 
find quite easy to not like Mayweather. Do you know what I mean? There's quite a lot yeah, of things yeah. about his personality. So, yeah, he'll be he'll be rubbish for a, a good couple of years. I think later down the line, when people look back, it, it'd still be considered a, a top. Look, but it would be similar to, like, you know, Nas. On a Shay Mosley, Shay Mosley, nobody gave him a dog's chance against Mayweather. They, they wanted him to win because they didn't like Mayweather. But they didn't think he'd win. And then when he caught Mayweather in that second round with that big shot, yeah. And then his legs went, and then he hit him again. It was like, whoa. Whoa. He could, he if Berta chance. were to catch Mayweather with a similar shot, and the legs went, and Berta was able to follow up, because Berta's quite a powerful guy. Yeah. Oh, he's limited, but he's powerful. Well, Maidana's limited, and there was, I think it was the fourth round. He caught him on the bell. Yeah. And he, and he was in went. trouble. He was in serious trouble. That's my point. Serious I mean, you trouble. know. And he's got nothing to lose. Everyone's expecting Burton to get his ass kicked. So it's like, unless, you know. Do you think it's good that, you know, like people like, you like you remember Buster Douglas when he beat Tyson. Do you know what I mean? Do you think it's good that these sort of lower fighters, you know, well, it's certainly lower, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but not pound for pound stars. Do you think it's, do you think they should be chucked the odd chance now and again, these kind of guys? Uh, I mean, Floyd's record. Look at Floyd's record and, and the guys he's fought. I know a lot of people slash Mayweather, but let's look at the other fighters around in the division. How many other guys fight consistently like Mayweather, the top guys in the division? Yeah, the I, I think I think Mayweather gets a, a hard time for saying... He does. He's fought, uh, he's you, fought. Anybody who slags him off or says anything bad about Mayweather, ask him, ask them, name me their fighter that's fighting as consistently as Mayweather and fighting consistently the top fighters in the world and winning and uh, and being still remaining undefeated. Yeah, there's no. Fine. <laughs> so yeah. there's no comparison, really, is there? Mm. Yeah, well, as I said before, there's a lot of things that are easy to hate about Floyd Mayweather, but of as course. a boxer, you can't you can't take anything away from him, really, in my opinion. Like oh. he's made everyone else look very ordinary or or pretty shit. Everyone he's fought, yeah, think- apart from you know, <laughs> Mosley had a couple of you know, we're struggling to find a moment. We've talked about one one punch at the end of the fourth round with Maidana. And a couple of shots from Mosley. That is about it, in it really. There's not, there's not much else yeah. there. You know, he's the Pacquiao fight was interesting. He caught Pacquiao caught him in one round, I think, or two rounds. He caught yeah, him. yeah, there's a little bit, but you know, you know, Pacquiao's Pacquiao, isn't he? So he's yeah. he's up there, same sort of stature yeah. as Mayweather. But, I don't um, think he ever landed anything really of any significance. No, did he? he didn't. He made him look very, very ordinary, very ordinary, and. And he does it all again. I'm kind of, I'm kind of looking forward to May, Mayweather retiring, to be honest. But, and what's this big thing about this? I keep saying it. People could say, "Oh, he's gonna, he's gonna break Marciano's record." Well, hold on. What about Julio Cesar Chavez? He had eighty. He was eighty-nine and oh. You had Ricardo Lopez, fifty-five and oh. Yeah. Where it's, is it's not a record, is it? No, it's not a record. It's Where record. is this record? It's not a Stop record. Stop talking about Mayweather and a record. There's no record. There is no record. There's no yeah. record for him to break. He's the he is the biggest uh, selling boxer. Oh, yeah, and give him that, yeah. But you give him that, right? No Highest record. grossing, fine. But he's not breaking no like unbeaten records because he's not. Why yeah. do they keep talking about Marciano? Marciano's a heavyweight. Why do they keep talking about Marciano uh, 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 and Mayweather beat Marciano's record? What about Chavez's record? It's just simplistic journalism, isn't it? As usual. It's just, you know what I mean? It's so, yeah. I'm good on a newspaper. That's all yeah, it is, really. So, Berto, for me, Berto, um, he says he's, he's, he's got one foot out the door, Mayweather. So, you know, at least he's honest. He's saying, look, I might fight Mayweather. I might fight Berto. I might fight Mayfield. I mean, I'd like to see. I don't mind. I wouldn't mind watching the Berto fight because, as long as he retires after that, I don't want to hear him fight until fifty. You know, I'm not interested. Don't care. Yeah, I'd really retire. Don't want to see Pacquiao and just, with just, the two. Just, just, no, I don't see that. I don't want to see I that. I don't want anything to do with that if it does happen. Um, yeah. I'd like to see Pacquiao Thurman. Really, you like that? Yeah, I'd like to see be that. A good one. Oh, it's funny. We were talking about. Uh, I was talking with Jay on the show last week, and we were saying that we reckon that. Um, the sort of Pacquiao is probably going to be lined up for Craw- you know, to hand the the torch over to Terence Crawford because you know Bob Arum's not going to be that bothered in a couple of fights time. He's going to want to yeah. do things you know that benefit top ranking Bob Arum and him losing to Terence Crawford. You know, and what a big a big 
way to announce yourself as a you know a world great in beating knocking out Pacquiao or getting a UD yeah. against him. That could yeah, be. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good. That's a good fight. I'd like to. I also think that Thurman versus. I think I didn't think before, but I actually think Bradley's got a very good chance of beating Thurman now. Oh yeah, I do. I think Bradley. Yeah, I, I, I actually have. i have Bradley beating Thurman at the moment after, especially after the Colazo fight. Definitely. Absolutely. Can, can you imagine the. You know, Bradley's going to get a lot more shots off. He's a lot craftier. His defence is a lot better. He thinks he's better than Bradley. He thinks he's better than Pacquiao. He thinks he's better than all the rest of them. I tell you, the Sean Porter fight as well. I used to think Porter would, would get destroyed by Thurman. I ain't so sure now. That's probably the best fight he could take next. Because that, that's probably a fight that's going to be respected by the fans. And it's probably the easiest one out there for him. Although it's not an easy fight at all. He can't. He can't. He can't run around the ring against. He, 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 I don't think he's good enough to run around the ring against Porter and keep Porter off him. He's got to use the jab, which he, which I don't see Thurman using much of a jab. Um, and when he sits on those ropes, Porter's going to have a field day with him. What about Thurman Khan? Can you see that happening? That's been talked about quite a bit. Khan, where does he go now? Let's be honest. He's talked about Thurman. He's talked about Thurman. I don't see Thurman Khan happening. I really don't. Who's Khan going to gonna fight? Because you don't want to fight Brooke. Can't, he's not. He's not going to be fighting Mayweather. I can't see him fighting Pacquiao because he's with Heyman. So, yeah. what's Khan going? Khan Algeri too. Yeah, I was, I was just about to say that. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, Algeri deserves it. I, I think. To be oh, fair, I, we laugh, I, but Algeri. Okay, let me ask you. I ask all Amir Khan fights. Name me one fight Amir Khan has had that has said, you know what? I'm a true 147 pounder fighter. You know what I'd like to fight? Amir Khan, Danny Garcia too. That's the fight I want to see next. Yeah. Let Garcia deal with Malinaji. Let's hope he can get past Malinaji because he struggles with a left jab. Yeah. Let's see him get past Malinaji, right? Let's hope he's successful against Malinaji. Let's see Khan, Garcia too for in the welterweight division. I think that's a good fight because is... Khan can avenge that. Is Garcia Malinaji at 147? Yes. It is at 147, yeah? So yeah. that's interesting. So, yeah, that could be a fight that, that could happen down the line, garcia Khan team. But to be fair, does Khan deserve another go at Garcia? Well, I don't know. Well, I mean, Garcia is now, he's got to prove himself as a 147er. Yeah. I don't know. That's a good point. That's a good point. I'd like to see Lucas Matisse, Amir Khan. <laughs> I can never see that happening. Yeah, that never happen. I'd love it. Yeah, I'm sure Matisse would love it, but... Yeah, yeah, that's definitely not happening. What's yeah. going on for Lucas Matisse now, by the way? Oh, who was he going to be fighting? They were talking about him fighting... Oh, who they say that he was going to fight? Uh... You know who, 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 who Khan could fight? Provodnikov or, Brad, or Brandon Rios. Yeah, that could be. But again... They, look like, they look like Khan opponents, though, you know? Yeah, they're not... He sort of fought people like that already, do you know what I mean, though? He that's it, but look on. at... Look at Brooke. He could fight. I could see Brooke fighting one man, one Marquez if he doesn't fight um, Rios. Yeah. Well, it's the Rios thing, that's been going on for ages. You're hearing completely different stories from the Rios camp and the Brooke camp. So, you know, God knows what's going on there. But, um, yeah, Brooke, I think Brooke was meant to be on the September 12th card and they're moving that back to October now. So... Should be uh, just see Khan Brook. Just put it on. I don't know. Who would you like to see Brook fight if you couldn't fight Khan? I'd like to see. I'd like to see Thurman, but I, I, you know, that's not gonna. That's not gonna happen for for a long while Brooke's yet. Talking about Thurman now. Um, I'd like to see Thurman fight Bradley. Uh, Brook fight Bradley. Actually, I think that would be. You know, that would really show us if Kel Brook is is a proper world yeah. champion. Do you know what I mean? I, I'm a big fan of Brook actually. Um, a big, big fan. I think the guy is very strong. I think he's, I think he's underrated in a lot of his, in a lot of his movement and how he can judge pace. I know, I know his couple of fights back, he missed a few shots, but he did have that injury. But yeah, I'd like to see that. I'd like to see Bradley against Brooke. I think that would be. I'd like to see Brooke go to the US and defend his title against Bradley. I think that would show him to be a really a top champion. I think that would really announce him as well. And it's a fight that can happen. That'd be a good fight. Very good fight. Very good fight. Very good fight. So brilliant. Well, I think that is. Have we have we missed anything out, mate? Uh, yeah, you have. Arthur Abraham fights this weekend at Stiglitz for about the fourth or the fifth time. Yeah. So that's. Um, I think that looks like it's going to be Abraham's last fight, isn't it? 
Yeah, win, lose, draw, bush, you know. Yeah, probably um, a, good, a good draw. Oh, yeah. and of course, um, Frank Boglioni fights off now against the Chudinov. Yeah, well, tell you what, that's a hell of a bit of matchmaking. He's a lucky boy to get that fight, isn't he? Because yeah. he, he was a Lee Markham he had a draw against. Um, it's not good, is it? Yeah, it's not good. It's, um, and um, there was other... I was going to talk about that. Um, so how can we not talk about Andy Lee and, and Billy Joss? Oh, of course, look, there's so much happened this week. Um, yeah, oh, that's over... Did you go to the press conference, by the way? Or no, anything? I didn't. No. Um... Yeah, do you know what I really like about that? I, I was watching the thing, and there's just two guys there who literally can't wait to have a scrap with each other. They yeah. cannot wait to have, but they're still showing like they were trying to square off. I think Billy Joe Saunders started laughing halfway through it because yeah. I think they you, they have a lot of respect for each other. But yeah. I'm really happy it's in Limerick as well. In Limerick, is yeah, it? It's yeah. Good um, Andy Lee's home. I think he deserves that. I like the way I think Billy Joe Saunders has shown some real class here in yeah. taking the fight and just doing it. And he said as soon as he got there, he was like, yeah, I'm up for it. I think it's a, a real good thing for for Ireland. And I think it's I think it's Absolutely. a real good move by Box Nation as well, just just doing with what the champion wants. And I think Adam Booth has to be given a bit of credit here as well because I believe he's put most of the thing together and yeah. um, sorted out the numbers. So, you know, first of all, you know, I'll, I'll ask you, who, who do you like? Who... Um, Who do you reckon? Saunders early, Lee late. Yeah. Because I look up, you've got to ask yourself, I look at fighters and their patterns. And what I know about Billy Joe Saunders is that in his biggest fights, he tires down the stretch. And if he tires down the stretch against someone like Andy Lee, with that one punch knockout power, it could be bad news for Billy Joe Saunders. I don't know how big a punch of Saunders is at world level. And uh, obviously, Andy Lee has been dropped by Quillen. He's been dropped by John David, uh, John Jackson. And they heavier punches than Saunders. And Lee got off the canvas to win those to win fights, you know? Good point, um, so I think, I think Lee's the favourite at the moment in this fight because of the calibre of fights he's had for me. Um, he, you know, the... the, the the background he had fighting and being trained with Manuel Stewart. I think now he's coming onto his own now, Andy Lee. And he's definitely, I think he's, I think he's a premier middleweight, in my personal opinion. I think he's a premier middleweight. He's come of age. Yeah, yeah, he's come of age. And I think with, and he, he just finished having the Quillin fight. He was able to drop Quillin as well. I think that one punch knockout, genuine knockout power, world level. I want to know how... Um, Saunders wins how Saunders deals with that he's got a good chin Saunders we show that in Eubank yeah, he's got fight. a very good chin yeah but I don't think Eubank is a world class puncher you know yeah yeah I'd and, agree I'd agree yeah and, and if it goes down to a brawl I know I'm backing mm. I'm backing Andy Lee with that one punch knockout power think, can can Saunders outbox Lee for 12 rounds that's what a lot of Billy Joe Saunders fans were worried about him going into Eubank fight weren't they they were like everyone was saying he has to box. He has to box. And I think that was probably one of the first times that we've seen him be that disciplined in a fight, Billy Joe Saunders. And yeah. There was a couple of rounds where he was gassing a little bit. But, yeah, I think he has to stay with that exact mentality if he did with the Chris Eubank thing. I think they're quite similar in a way. My concern is, when was the last time Billy Joe Saunders fought? Yeah, he's had a long time off, hasn't he? Blowing he's up in lot, weight. A lot of money Blowing to spend as well. Weight. Then having to come back down in weight. How is he making that weight to get back down? He went to Addy, who was in the best shape of his career. And I was there. I was there for uh, Eubank Saunders. I, I interviewed Billy Joe Saunders. And, you know, he looked in great shape. But it's just making the weight with him. And if it is symptoms of him gassing because he's too big for the weight or he's not losing the weight properly. And he's gone to, listen, he's gone to Marbella and had this top training camp. But yet still was gassing down the stretch against Eubank Jr. Yeah, so, you know, and you've got Andy Lee, who is there from round one to round 12. And he's got that one punch knockout power. And for me, he's got the equaliser. I don't think yeah, Saunders... that's a good point. You know, if you talk about Billy Joe Saunders gassing there, if he gasses it, Andy Lee, if anyone's going to take, you know, take that as an opportunity to knock him out, Andy Lee's going to. Uh, anyone else in the division other than Golovkin maybe but. 
I mean, you can't knock Saunders, British Commonwealth European. You, you can't knock that. And I love Billy Joe Saunders. Yeah, he's a great fighter, yeah. But there's European and then there's world level. Chris Eubank isn't world level. Not, Junior, he's not no. world level. Uh, Spike O'Sullivan isn't world level. He's a good fighter. Um, Nick Blackwell um, is not world level. Um, John Ryder is not world level. No. But then look at then look at Andy Lee and who he's fought. He's fought Quillen. You know, and and, and he's in a, his prime. Right. He's fought. Uh, what's his name? Is he, didn't he fight Vera? Brian Vera. Yeah, he fought. He fought Vera. Yeah. yeah he well, fought I, Vera. When he was when he was pretty decent as well, yeah. Yeah, um, he's for um, yeah the Jackson fight with, uh, as a puncher, and he fought the the, the guy who wanted to win the world title. Oh, yeah. I mean, so he's, Korobov, he's, yeah. so he's mixed the higher level, win and loss, but he's mixed the higher level than Billy Joe Saunders. Billy Joe Saunders yet has, has yet to fight a real international name of name of, of real quality. So Andy Lee is his first international name of real quality proven well real oh, yeah. quality so you know it's whether Saunders can go to the next level mm. and and actually make it at that level and that's my concern with Saunders yeah this is this is the the you know if if Billy Joe Saunders is to be what because yeah everyone's been talking about Billy Joe Saunders first since he was 18 haven't they yeah, you know, yeah I remember the trans world sport documentary on him when he was Little yeah. Billy Joe Saunders, you know, he's like, you know, I had no hair on his face or anything. And, um, you know, this is it now, isn't it? This is, this is, you know, if he beats Andy Lee, he is there. And then he's going to have to go and, well, he'll probably fight Eubank again, maybe. But, you know, the, the you know, your Golovkins, your Lemuse, your, your Quillens, that's what he's going to consistently just, be I, involved in. I, I just, I, I, I don't know. I'd love to see Billy do it, but I, I just, I can't see it. Billy Joe Saunders has got a an eight rounder coming up, honey. Has he? I think so. Yeah, I think he's got an eight round. I, th- I thought he did. Maybe I'm wrong, but maybe they changed it because he was. Um, I thought he had a an eight rounder coming up because he seems to be one of those fighters that doesn't really have an issue uh, fighting in eight rounders or anything like that. Yeah. So um, I can't find it, but. Not to worry, it would I, think, be, yeah. I think he's highly skilled. Lack of punch power and stamina are my questions marks for him. And 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 the out of the out of the ring activities are all the things I'm very concerned about with him. Yeah, well he's, he consistently blows up after each fight. We see him in Box Nation, it's like you know. And then you look at someone like Ad, you look at someone like Andy Lee, who's a consummate pro. Yeah, you, you can tell, can't you? You really consummate can pro and he's got Adam Booth in his corner. I, I, you know, and and Booth will be setting uh, a strategy against Billy Joe Saunders. Booth will have seen uh, Saunders gassing. He would have seen how uh, uh, Saunders likes to get into a tear up. And I think he'll he'll say, you know what, we're going to draw Saunders into a fight, fire fight, draw him into a fight, and let the left or the right hand go, and let's see how Saunders takes that. Mm-hmm. And um, moving moving on from that, we'll we'll close on someone I haven't heard much from. Do you know what's going on with um? Eubank Jr. at the moment. Obviously, he... Uh... Remember I said to you before, I think I spoke to you, and the, the story was that Eubank Sr. pulled out Eubank Jr. from the fight with Gennady Golovkin, uh, no, with, with, um, with Saunders, to go and chase the fight with Gennady Golovkin in November. That was what I heard. Yeah, yeah, I remember you saying and, that. Has uh, there been any, well, any movement on that? I don't think that's good. Uh, well, sorry, that, uh, no, because Gennady's going uh, to be fighting Bernard Hopkins now. Yeah, yeah, I've had that as well. So, so if Gennady fights Bernard Hopkins, where does that leave? fight everyone at the moment. Any, he's <laughs> Mayweather, Froch, Hopkins, Eubank, uh, Lemieux's been chucked out there. He's fighting a lot of people, isn't he? So, yeah, so. Lemieux, Lemieux, like I said, Gennady Golovkin needs to fight uh, Lemieux. That's it. I don't want to hear no more of Gennady Golovkin fighting anybody else but David Lemieux. Fight a guy who's going to hit you back and wants to hit you back and has got the power to knock you out. Fight Lemieux. And then let's talk about Gennady Golovkin. All right, mate. Brilliant. Well, on that note, I think we'll end the show. I said finally, I think about an hour ago, but we've we've had so much fun again uh, yes. having a chat. I really appreciate you joining me again, Ingram. Anyone, I'm pretty sure most people who subscribe to me subscribe to 
Bailoric Boxing, Bailoric Worldwide, Ingram Jones, yep. all the all the rest. Go and check it out. Um, thank you, the 190 people we tuned in last week. We're growing every week. And subscribe because we're going to have exclusive footage from the show at Manchester this weekend. And that's a bit about all from us. Absolutely. And I would say support Adam, uh, Noble Force, and what he does. Does some great interviews. Um, Get some really good people on his show. I don't know how he does it, but he does it. And I really appreciate it. So it makes me, people like Adam make me want to work harder. So shout out to you, Adam, doing a lot of hard work and a lot of people not seeing what you're doing. They need to see you sit down and watch what you're doing. You're getting these interviews, the, the interview of Anthony Mundine, to talk to Jonathan Banks. You know, to talk to the people you're talking to, not just the stars in boxing, but to talk to up and coming rising fighters in the division, which we need to look at those mm. as well. So it's amazing to um, be able to get those interviews, and it's all love to you, brother. You yeah. need to just keep going and Cheers, keep working. Mate. Appreciate it. Have you got have you got anything exciting coming up this week? I don't know, mate, but every time I see an interview view, it makes me want to have to go and do an interview as well. Like, that Adam Force has got no interview out. I've got to get an interview out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I do the same. I do the same. So, <laughs> that, right. that. I need some more exciting intro music. Yours gets me gets me ticking. Uh, that's, that's <laughs> well, it was, it was the face of the old Superman thing, so it was a bit of a, a cheap rip-off of the old Superman thing. So. Oh, brilliant, mate. Well, uh, thanks again so much for coming on, mate.